Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be diving into another Windows customization program and this time around, we're going to be focusing on the taskbar because today's program known as Retrobar allows you to replace the taskbar in modern versions of Windows to make it appear like Windows XP's or even Windows 9X's taskbar. I'll have the link to this down below if you want to go and check it out. It's hosted over here on GitHub. This is a free and open source piece of software and I got to give a huge thank you to Chris for sending me this video suggestion in an email and once I actually looked into this myself and tried it out I thought this would be right up this channel's alley so yeah we're gonna be checking it out today and seeing uh, what it's all about what I found really cool about this too is this is developed by at least one of the contributors to this project is dreamin aka Sam Johnson this is the current maintainer of the Cairo shell project now Cairo shell is a program that we took a look at over a year ago on this channel in early 2020. So if you've been watching this channel since then, that may ring a bell. But if you haven't seen the Cairo video, if you have no idea what Cairo is, you can go check it out up in the cards. But this is a user interface modification for Windows that gives Windows 10 a more Mac OS or Linux style interface. But today we're focusing on Retrobar and this right here is what it looks like. And to be totally honest with you guys, and you're gonna see in a minute here once I install this program, it literally looks like somebody just ripped the taskbar out of Windows XP or out of Windows 9X and dropped it here in Windows 11. It's really, really cool. And yes, this also works on Windows 10. We're just using the latest build of Windows 11 today. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So to download this, you want to go to the releases area over here. And as of this video, the latest version is 1.3. So you want to download the retrobar.zip file here. Uh, and there is no setup executable or anything. You just open this up and you want to extract the single executable from here and uh, we're just going to drag it to our desktop here and you just run the executable so there's no setup involved or anything like that there is however going to be a windows smart screen pop up here now i feel this is necessary to clarify in a video where we take a look at a program that triggers smart screen because the wording of this can perhaps lead somebody to believe that oh this contains a virus or this contains malicious software because it says running this app might put your pc at risk well that is just the standard error message that smart screen gives you it isn't necessarily because this application contains a virus it's in this case because this application isn't widely known it's an unrecognized application Windows doesn't know what it is so it triggers smart screen in this case just to warn you to use caution uh, but here are the virus total results for this executable if you were wondering it is completely clean and again the application is open source so you can examine the source code if you want to but we're just gonna run it here so you want to click on more info here and click on run anyway to allow the program to execute and I wanted to show you what would happen if you didn't have .NET Core installed this program relies on .NET Core and if you don't have it installed you'll get this error message right here that prompts you to download it so we're going to click on yes since we don't have it installed in this VM and it opens up the download page here so you just want to scroll down make sure you're under the Windows tab here and in this case we're going to download the x64 version once it downloads you just want to open the file here and go through the installation process which is very straightforward uh, you just want to click on install here, authenticate with user account control. So we'll say yes. So it's finished. We're going to click on close and there is no restart required. All you want to do is just run Retrobar again and this time it will actually execute. And you see it will hide the Windows 11 taskbar and open up Retrobar. Here it is, guys. Now, what I really love about this program, my favorite feature is how it modifies the taskbar buttons because the buttons themselves look uh, just like they were ripped out of in this case windows 9x and dropped here in windows 11. the only thing that stands out is the system tray because the icons do not get changed so you have the same icons over here and on certain themes so let's right click on it and go to properties here and this is how you change the theme we'll touch on all the options in here later but on certain themes like the watercolor theme for instance yeah it is pretty difficult to see some of these icons down here but for other themes like the windows xp blue or the luna theme the blue variant of the luna theme they show up just fine but they still look out of place so the system tray is really the only thing that doesn't get modified at least in terms of the icons and you can also turn on collapse notification area icons to give it that little uh, pop out button right here that you had in windows xp now there's no animation like you had in windows xp where the icons would 
gradually slide out and gradually slide back in. Uh, it's just a static change, but still it looks pretty good. And honestly, I would rather keep this on so that you still get the functionality of being able to hide your uh, system tray icons. So going back to the properties panel here, the other options you have are to have RetroBar automatically start when you log on. So you can check this here. You also have the ability to hide the clock. So if you don't want the clock showing down here in the system tray, you can just uncheck this here. And again, it is instantaneous. It takes effect automatically. So there you go. Show, hide, show, hide. Uh, one thing you lose the ability to do is access your calendar by clicking on the clock down here. So normally, if I close out of RetroBar here, I can click on the time and date and get access to the calendar. And in this case, since we're running Windows 11, the notification center as well. When you have RetroBar running, you lose that functionality. So now if I click on the clock, nothing happens. I can double click on it or I can right click and select adjust date and time to open up the date and time properties. But to be fair to RetroBar, that is how this works in Windows XP. There is no calendar when you click down here on the clock. So technically, it's mimicking that functionality. So I just found that kind of interesting. But yes, you, you lose that ability there. But you also have the ability, if we open up the properties window here, to uh, show or hide the quick launch. So if you don't want the quick launch to show down here, you can turn that off. And you can also change the location. Now, this is not gonna change the location of the quick launch area itself, but this allows you to change what folder that quick launch is utilizing. Say we want it to be the desktop here, we can select that folder. And now it will show all of my icons on the desktop here, even the ones that are hidden at the moment. Uh, so yeah, you can make the uh, quick launch like super large if you want to. But uh, yes, and take a look at the other themes if you were curious, we touched briefly on the water color theme but here's what it looks like and again the buttons definitely look uh, just like it was something ripped out of one of the early whistler builds uh here's windows 2000 here is windows me so windows me and windows 95 98 are two separate listings here because the color scheme slightly changes there because windows me's taskbar is going to look more like windows 2000s because that's what they were going for in windows me and you can see as i shift through all of these different themes here that not only does the taskbar obviously change but the font of the start button the taskbar buttons and even in the properties panel here all change. So that's a, a nice touch as well. Uh, one of the other things, let's just set this back to Windows XP Blue here, and we'll turn off Quick Launch to get rid of all these icons. Uh, one of the other things I want to touch on is the Start menu. Now, obviously, RetroBar does not modify the Start menu whatsoever. So you click on Start, you get the regular Windows 11 Start menu. But a great program to use in conjunction with RetroBar is Open Shell. So if I go to uh, All Programs here and scroll down here, I've got Open Shell installed. We can run it here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the style to classic with two columns we're going to select skin and we're going to change the skin to windows xp luna because of course we're currently using the the windows xp luna blue variant theme down here and uh, now you can change the skin variation in open shell here but there are not the other variations of the luna theme in retrobar so you only have again if i open up properties here and show you only have windows xp blue and xp classic but i think out of all the ones to include xp blue is definitely the best option because it is the most recognizable and the most iconic because it was the default theme so we'll close out of that and uh, now when i open up the start menu here you can see that i mean it's going to look kind of like the xp start menu not exactly it's not going to be 100 exact but it is pretty close except for of course the icons uh, you can also choose to uncheck no icons in second column so that we get icons here of course they're not going to be the standard xp icons but still definitely looks better than the Windows 11 start menu when you're trying to go for this XP look here. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is uh, this massive gap that you see in between the taskbar and the start menu. Now, this is because the Windows 11 taskbar, even though we can't see it right now, is set to the largest size. So that's why that we're getting this gap here because the Windows 11 taskbar technically goes up to here. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned in my last Windows 11 build demonstration video, which I did uh, last month or a couple months ago, Microsoft has removed the ability to change the taskbar size, at least in the latest Windows 11 build. It's possible that feature could be reintroduced in the final release of Windows 11, but right now it has been completely removed. So you can no longer change the taskbar size. 
at least from the settings application because there is a registry key you can add to the Windows registry to manually change the taskbar size. There's actually three sizes to choose from and this trick does work in the current, the latest development build of Windows 11, but again, there's always the possibility that that could get removed in the final release. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So you want to open up the run prompt, type in reg edits, open up the registry editor and we'll say yes here to user account control and you want to go to H key current user software Microsoft you want to go to Windows you want to go to current version and you want to go to Explorer and advanced and in here you want to right click and add a new D word value and you want to call this taskbar if I can spell right <laughs> taskbar SI just like that spelled with the T and the S capitalized press enter double click on it and you want to make sure the value is zero now the default value is going to be zero but there are three different sizes to choose from small medium and large and that's represented by zero one and two respectively so in this case we're going to set it to zero to make it the small smallest size. We're going to close out of the registry editor and we're going to open up task manager. And if you have a Windows Explorer window opened, we'll just click on it here and task manager will give us the option to restart Explorer. You can also manually kill the process or just log out of your Windows session and log back in. And now if I close out of this and I click on the start menu here, you'll see that there is no longer that massive gap in between the taskbar and the start menu. There is still this really tiny gap here. It's not really that noticeable, but if you are looking for it, you will see it. And that is because the Windows 11 taskbar, even in its smallest size, is still a hair larger than retrobar here. So I can uh, exit out of retrobar here and you can see there's that little hair there. If I click here again, now there will no longer be that gap. So yes, retrobar is not exactly the same size, as the smallest Windows 11 start uh, or taskbar, but it is pretty close. And this is the case for all of the included themes. Windows XP Blue is actually the tallest one. If I change this to Windows 2000, you see it will shrink by just a hair and that gap will become just a hair larger. And all of the other uh, included themes are exactly the same height. So you see if I scroll down here through all of them, Windows XP Blue is the, uh, the tallest one. But yeah, there you have it, guys. That is a brief demonstration of Red Retrobar, a very cool piece of software. Like I said, I thought it was right up this channel's alley. And honestly, this does a much better job than OpenShell does at modifying the taskbar. Now, you may remember a couple years ago, actually back in 2019, I did two videos on transforming Windows 10 into Windows XP. And in that video, we used OpenShell for the start menu to get this start menu right here. And we also used it to modify the taskbar because it does give you the ability to select a taskbar texture as well as a start button image it does not however give you the ability to change the design of the buttons and that's what I really like about retrobar here so I think if you're wanting to theme Windows 11 or Windows 10 and make it look more like 9x or Windows XP this is a program that you have to check out for sure so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below turn on those notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.